What up, Long Beach? Welcome back to GazetteSports.com. It's JJ. And Tyler. And the CIF Boys Basketball Playoff video is brought to you by Naples Rib Company. The time is extremely nigh for these state playoffs as we come to you live via tape delay from the west side of Long Beach, Polly and Bullard at Cabrillo High School, the Jaguar Gym, an absolute scene. Yeah, Bullard coming down from Fresno. They're fresh off an upset over Taft. They're led, as many teams are, by a number 23, Eric Armstead. The problem for the Knights, who's going to match up with the Jackrabbit size? They got Jordan Bell and, of course, Rashawn Prince inside, taller than anyone on the Knights roster. See if they can take advantage as we tip this one off. The first possession, though, said a lot about this game. Pauly just way cavalier with the basketball. Bad passing turns into some good offense from Bullard, and they were off and running. Yeah, the Knights love forcing those turnovers and getting out moving in transition. They create a lot of turnovers by being in the press for the entire game. Jackrabbits uh, having some difficulty with it early, leading to a 10-second call right here. And the Knights, opportunistic. They capitalized with a 10-5 lead early on. Ro P going to put a stop to that with a turnaround pop. Ooh-wee. And then on defense, not in my house. Got to watch your head. That backboard's sturdy. If he didn't get it, Jay Bell would have gotten it. But the buzzer beater right here from Armstead. The bank is definitely open for the visitors from the no, and they're up four after one. KJ Fagan turns the tide, though. The little freshman 10 here finds Jordan Bell for the and one, and the second quarter really opened up. Yeah, it opened up. Fagan, obviously, so much talent for such a young player, just a freshman. Expect to see a lot more from him. But as you mentioned, a lot smoother on offense. You see RJ floating to the 10 right here, and Corey Silverstrom, get used to that name. He was feeling it. Uh, at Cabrillo where it's not easy to feel it. Ropey feels it everywhere. Silverstrom again, beautiful balance in the lane right there. And then Kroom off the turnover. Guess who's coming? Ropey. <laughs> he loves that tip dunk following up for his teammates. And then Munson, we're, we're running out of time here in the half. A buzzer beater off the glass. Oh, and in. Uh, everyone is going to the ATM in this game. Yep, bank is definitely open on this night at Cabrillo. We got a one-point game at halftime. Buckle up. We're going to the second half. And again, the Knights jump out to a lead early. Yeah, they were definitely ready to run this entire game. And look how much these players want this game. You see Jordan Bell loses the ball, comes all the way back to fight for it. Can't quite get it, but guess who's going to get the rebound, JJ? Jordan Bell. And that leads to, you guessed it, Ropey. Rashawn Prince was just everywhere he needed to be for the poly tonight, getting the big buckets, absolute man's game. And like we said, that size inside, Jack Rabbit's just too strong. Yeah, they were able to take advantage. Uh, several offensive rebounds padding the stats right there. Eventually, Brandon Staten's going to put that one in. But Chris Russell, uh, that shot can't be your only hustle. That's a tough shot to make. Tit for tat as Strickland goes with a beautiful reversal. It's 47-47 with less than four to go. More rabbits down in that hole as beating it up in the paint is Bell and Prince. Silverstrom from the outside, three of his 21 points. And we're still tied. This time it's 49-49 with a minute six left in the fourth quarter. Ro P goes solo dolo. Yeah, just give him the ball and watch him work. Nobody attacks the basket Turn like him. Rashawn Prince. Turn yeah, him. he turns it back and forth, draws the foul, and heads to the line. Only gets one of two. Jackrabbit's up one, just over 40 seconds left. Eric Armstead dribbles this ball off of his foot. Bullard wanted the foul. Polly gets the ball. Guess where they're going? They're giving it to their man, Rashawn Prince, and he's going coast to coast. Woo-hoo-hoo! PCH the one, baby. <laughs> yeah, Ropey all the way the distance. I see you, say the Poly fans. They're up three with 25 ticks left on the inbound. Oh, the foul on Silverstrom right there. That is tough. It's a one and one. Misses the front end. Polly gets the rebound, tries to save it. Oh, unlucky right to Silverstrom. Beautiful layup. Bullard now down by just a point. Oh, what an amazing layup that was. Silverstrom looked like he was ready for that pass. Like you said, it's 52, 51, 19 seconds left. Got to get the ball in. They do to Alonzo Williams. He's immediately fouled. He's going to go to the line, but then he misses the front end. Nobody could hit a free throw in the four, in the last fourth quarter. So with six seconds left, Silverstrom to the 10. Oh, no, Bell saves the game. Or not. Oh. That is just heartbreaking. Gets the shot off in time. It goes through the bucket with no time remaining on the clock. Walter Orr, that is just, that's one of the best amazing slash lucky shots we've seen all year in high school basketball. That's not something you practice, JJ. That's just one of those things. Sometimes 
Fate smiles upon you, the Jackrabbits. A tremendous season, obviously. Rashawn Prince, what a great year. He'll be back next year. A lot of returning talent for the Jackrabbits. Got to learn from this loss. Sometimes it doesn't break your way. And Bullard, I mean, very fortuitous on that last second shot. They will move on to take on Modern Day in the next round of these state playoffs. Well, like you said, Tyler, Polly will look towards next season to maybe get back this far and maybe an extra step further. But the Polly girls got an upset win over Brea. You know you're going to want to see them go for the state tile. They're playing Modern Day. Come back to GazetteSports.com for that coverage. Ladies and gentlemen, we've said it before, we'll say it again, we are Long Beach Sports.